Testing one, two, Kyle Pitts is going to be a bust this season. Kyle Pitts is going to be a bust this season. All right, welcome in, Outsiders. Ryan Ballard here with Ben Mendel and Corey Jason, continuing our Division Deep Dive series with another special weekend edition of the Outsider Sports Football Podcast. So we're recording this Thursday night, August 24th, right in the middle. Anthony Richardson just left the Colts on a touchdown drive and started flapping his wings, taunting the Philly fans. So I know these guys like it. Dylan and John not here Watch with us. So batteries. I'm sure they'd have something to say about it. But, you know, I had to get my Colts mentioned in for this show. Uh, but before we go, uh, dive into the AFC East, all right, I want to throw it back. The quick question and the news are going to kind of combine in one because we talked about the NFC East a few days ago. Corey, I remember you saying that Joe Shane is squeaky clean compared to the jokes we made about Howie Roseman having dirt on other teams. Then earlier today, he goes out and trades for former first-round pick. Let's call him defensive Swiss Army knife Isaiah Simmons. Mm-hmm. For just a seventh round pick. Simmons has not been what Arizona hoped he would be, but for a former first over or not first over first rounder, still on his That's a top ten field. pick though. Yeah, top I think ninth, eighth, ninth yep. overall, somewhere in there. Still on his rookie deal for just a seventh rounder. The word this. is tank is coming for Arizona. They made some other trades today, but to move on from Simmons like that, Shane's cleaning up. Look, I love this move. I wanted the Giants to draft Simmons back when he was uh, going into the draft. I loved him as a player. He is the exact kind of linebacker that I love. He goes side to side. He can cover sideline to sideline. He's got tremendous speed, great instincts. And now I think this fits. he fits this team even more now, especially with Wink as the defensive coordinator. I am so excited to see Wink use Isaiah Simmons exactly the way he needs to be used in the season he is about to have on the beautiful new turf at MetLife Stadium. Yeah, Simmons, he was like fourth on my big board that that draft season behind, you know, Thomas, Wills, and Wirfs. Not in that order. Only offensive lineman I would have taken him over was Becton. Just because in Beckton I saw Eric Flowers all over again, I wanted Simmons. I knew it was a luxury pick. I knew we didn't have that luxury. I'm so excited to have him now because him with Bobby O going to make a formidable linebacker duo, and the Giants have said that they're going to use him as a linebacker, but he's going to be so much more than that because he can cover tight ends. He could be spies against quarterbacks. He can stop the run. Think of how many sacks he's going to get. I know nobody gets a lot of sacks in a wink system, but he's going to be rushing the passer a lot. So he's going to get a few sacks in there. He's going to be a nightmare. And honestly, going from what we had last year, Jalen Smith and Tate Crowder as our week one starting linebackers to Bobby Akariki and Isaiah Simmons, that's even greater than a night and day difference. That's going for two guys who are basically not in the league starting last year to two guys that could have very long careers. And to get him for a seventh, I mean, D-Hop said it all that the uh, the cards got fleeced. Just amazing. And I can't wait to see what he does. Yeah, it's all about getting Isaiah Simmons up to speed, but that'll be a great, I mean, I'm a big Okereke guy. Obviously, that's going to be a great linebacker duo. Not just for this season, but hopefully Simmons sticks around. Sucks that his fifth-year option was declined, though, so now it's on a one-year deal pretty much. Yeah, Arizona didn't do you any favors there. Maybe that's why the seventh rounder, maybe if the fifth year option came ready, it would have been a six rounder. But all right, let's get in the AFC East here. Uh, Actually, real quick before moving on, Corey, you're still outside of MetLife. I'm waiting for your Hard Knocks (laughs) cameo. I've been watching. I haven't seen you yet. So I wouldn't sign the NDA. So they're they're scrubbing all the footage that I made. If you see like a blurry spot in the background. Okay. That's me getting digitally scrubbed out for not wanting to give them my rights and my features. I feel like I, I heard it was one la- this last week. I heard it was too difficult to scrub on some of the images. So they're the biggest difficulty is finding a way to just cut that one little scene out. Yeah. If it skips for a second, that's because Corey ran by in the background. <laughs> it's just a scene of me and Rogers with some ayahuasca. There you go. All right. So we'll talk about the Jets later on. We're going to start with the Buffalo Bills. They were 13 and three last year, winning this division yet again in this post Brady era. 
but their win total at 10 and a half. And my question is, is the window closing? Buffalo has been unable to do it. It's almost reminiscent of what the saints uh, had to deal with a number of years, just devastating playoff losses. Obviously everyone looks at the Buffalo bills losing in overtime to Kansas city. That's a huge thing about overtime rules. Well, we can have that discussion another time, but heartbreaker there that absolutely did not show up against the Bengals last year on their own turf. And it, I mean, that's the question. Is the window closing for Buffalo or is it open? Because some of the other teams in this division, let alone this conference, have gotten a lot stronger this offseason. Well, here's the thing with Buffalo. By the end of the season, the thought process was this team just isn't good enough. And they didn't get better. I mean, I, I, I'm looking at their roster and outside of Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs, they don't have anybody that scares you on the offense. I mean, James Cook and Gabe Davis, okay, maybe Cook takes a step being the starting running back. Maybe they get something out of Damian Harris. Maybe Latavius Murray can be that guy on the goal line. But, I mean, they don't really use Dawson Knox as much as they can. I, I don't I, – Khalil Shakir – uh, Trent Sherfield, Deontay Hardy. I mean, there's just a lot of wide receiver names that you don't know. Uh, the defense. Yeah, there are some players there that I like. I mean, they've got good pass rushers. Ed Oliver, uh, Greg Rousseau, uh, Vaughn Miller, Leonard Floyd, uh, Daquan Jones. Uh, they've got a great group of guys up front. Tredavious White is still a great player. I like their safeties in Poyer and Hyde, but I just don't think there's enough difference makers there in a loaded division when you think about it. There aren't many. There's maybe three. This is one of them. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Buffalo. I definitely think this is the toughest, you know, division race that they're going to face in their whole, uh, you know, window of opportunity because you have the Jets now skyrocketing up. The Dolphins are very good. You have the Pats. How can you ever really count out Bill Belichick, right? So you have three teams that could really compete with the Bills. To me, it's a matter of do you trust Josh Allen as one of the elite quarterbacks in the league to win big games? Do you trust McDermott as a great head coach? And do you trust the defense to keep them in games? Because if you trust the defense to keep them in tight games, even against teams that might even be better than them, then that goes to Josh Allen having to actually put him on his back and really win games. And I don't know if we've actually seen Allen do that consistently. He's lost most big games he's ever played in. He doesn't have that, you know, killer mentality that we saw Mahomes have and Burrow being able to win playoff games. It's going to be tough. But I think Allen is up to the task. He has to be. And I think the defense is going to be better than we give him credit for. It's just the offense is just lacking any type of explosiveness and explosiveness and weapons outside of Diggs. I mean, Allen can't run for himself. And, you know, luckily they used their first round draft pick on a pick that wasn't a luxury, right? Like they wouldn't take a tight end or anything with uh, one of the top picks, right? That, that would be stupid for them because you don't need it, especially with Dawson Knox. You're not a tight end away, right? So they have Dalton Kincaid. I don't understand that pick, but they're going to use him, and they're going to use him in the slot I've seen them using him in camp at. So maybe he could be somebody that helps them out, but the Bills are in for a rough ride. Yeah, it's been – I haven't kept it a secret. One of my biggest hot takes is what I think of Josh Allen. How I, I would not put him in the top five quarterbacks. Fantasy-wise, he's amazing. Regular season-wise, he puts up the stats. 13-3 and three record. He gets the wins there, but it's like you guys are saying. When push comes to shove – in the biggest moments in those playoffs, something is just not there. The Bills is are not Kyle on the same Is he the quarterbacks? All right, he's not that bad. All well, right. look, I also need to clarify, I'm not knocking Josh Allen. I'm knocking the rest of this roster. I know you're low on Josh Allen. I am not. I think Josh Allen's a good quarterback. There's only so much you can do at this point in the league. I think if this team goes anywhere, it's solely because of Josh Allen. Yeah, and I guess I, I should say, too, just because I don't have him on my top five, it's like, realistically, he's probably number six. I just, there is that killer instinct in some of the Who's ahead guys. of him? 
I had Mahomes at one, Burrow at two, and then I think I still had Rodgers, Hurts, and Lamar because those guys have already – they've accomplished more. Rogers I mean, have Lamar actually accomplished more? Unanimous MVP. Mm, that's not really winning games. Well, He's and I games. remember back – I remember back when we had the quarterback talk because Aaron Rodgers – Look, he's good, but he is not as good anymore. I'm not ready to write Aaron Rodgers off. One year removed from back-to-back MVPs. Write him a little lower on your list. I think I had him at five. He could switch with Allen, be that six, and you wouldn't lose any sleep over it. I'd lose sleep. Let's oh, go to no, Miami. It's, a, it's a vendetta. This is a vendetta, 100%. If this was a vendetta, Josh Allen wouldn't be in my top ten. I just think yeah. he's been put up on a pedestal when he hasn't proven as much. As How do you feel about guys. Herbert? He's probably he's definitely behind Josh Allen. He hasn't done anything either. He's been in the playoffs okay, good. one at least time. You're, at least you're consistent yeah, with that. I, I try to be. But let's go to Miami. <laughs> uh, the biggest thing here, I mean, they were 9-8 and eight last year. They got in the playoffs with their, what, third-string quarterback. They almost knocked off mm-hmm. Buffalo in the wild card round. But their win total sits again nine and a half, so they just got over that or just under that actually last season. But the name of the game here down in Miami is speed. Jalen Waddle, Tyree Kill, A Chain. We've talked about Raheem Mostert. I mean, they've revamped the defense from some of the personnel additions. Obviously, Jalen Ramsey will miss some time, but um, I'm having a Corey moment. Their defense. Amon Ross St. Brown. Not Amon Ross St. Brown is not their defensive coordinator. I'm just hanging out here on a on a pole right here. Yeah, feel the pain, man. Feel the pain. I'm feeling it now. This is getting clipped for sure. I gotta look it up now. This is where we need to snap. If you start snapping, you you sure you sure it's not the old Broncos guy, buddy? I know. I can't. Mister Mister Vic Fangio. Vic Fangio. I really wanted. I kept going back to Vance Joseph. Vic Fangio. Vance Joseph. Well, that's because Sergio Dip has his name engraved in your head. He's etched in the hearts of <laughs> millions. But yeah, Vic Vangio, I think we talked about before, falls in the category. Not a great head coach, but a great coordinator. I think his presence alone is really going to help out the Miami defense. And, they, I mean, they've been listed as the dark horse favorites, not just in the AFC East, but in the AFC as a whole. So where do you guys stand with Miami this season? I love Miami. I love Miami. I like three teams in this division. I think there are three really good teams in this division. I think Buffalo, while I may not be as high on them as I am for Miami, I think I love Miami's head coach. I'm a big fan of McDaniel. I think if Tua stays healthy, the sky's the limit for this team. I think that they're really able to get things going. The relationship between McDaniel and Tua has really, really been nice to see, especially after everything Tua went through with Flores. You know, Vic Fangio coming in to help the defense. And not to mention the fact, even without Ramsey, this defense still has a lot of talent. I mean, you've got Bradley Chubb, Christian Wilkins, um, you know, Raekwon Davis. These are some really talented guys. You still have Xavier Howard out there on the outside. I know, you know, they're going to be filling the void of Jalen Ramsey with Corey's best friend, Eli Apple. But hey, you know, the, the rest of the of the roster, it's it's serviceable. And look, Cincinnati was able to survive the regular seasons with Eli Apple. Miami certainly can too, because I think the rest of Miami's defense, especially their pass rush and the defensive line, can compare to anybody in the league. I mean, I can't understate I can't overstate how much that Ramsey injury is gonna hurt them. Dolphins are gonna be running out ten guys on defense every week until he's back. Just stop how, it. How are you gonna he's not that man? stop it? He is stop the it. worst cornerback I have ever seen in my life. Making him sound like he's a <laughs> he has his home. mom fight every single battle for him. When Annie <laughs> Apple opens her mouth. I don't even know what Eli Apple's doing. He's like just hiding behind her skirt or something. He just cannot function without his mom defending him. He runs to mommy every time somebody says something mean about him. 
Right? How do you have the Giants fan base, the Saints fan base, and the Bengals fan base all hate you for being terrible? But, you know, let's talk about some positive stuff because I'm good. I can go on a rant about how bad Eli Apple is. I can tell. Oh, boy. And if you thought you hated Pitts. Outsider Sports is a show of vendettas. And it really is. But uh, the offense, you got a genius in McDaniels. You have speed. Waddle's not a number two. Waddle is a number one. You have two number one wide receivers, Waddle and Hill. You have a quarterback who everybody kind of wrote off early on to it. And last year you saw, at least before he had the concussion issues, Tua was an MVP candidate. Like People really thought Tua could have won the MVP before he got hurt. I don't think he's going to get slowed down now. He's back. They fixed their backup issue. You're not trotting out you know, Skylar Thompson and uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Mike White is capable of winning games if Tua does go down, at least for a week or two, right? So the fact that you have that, you have a decent offensive line, the Dolphins are going to be competitive in just about every game they play. Now, it's going to suck if they do lose Tua because concussions can linger and come back pretty quickly. But hopefully that's not the case. And honestly, let Tua cook. He's been great, and I think McDaniels is the perfect head coach for him. And he showed up to camp with that sick new arm sleeve. And like you mentioned too, Miguel Blanco, ready to go in emergency (laughs) situations. Bouncing back up the East Coast to Foxborough. The New England Patriots still trying to find their way following Tom Brady's departure. 8-9 and nine last year, missing the playoffs. Projected win total over under sits at 7.5, the lowest in this division. And I think it's just it's point blank. It's a make-or-break year for Mac Jones. I distinctly remember last season, Bailey Zappi coming in and just igniting the offense. It looked drastically different. Now, to be fair, Mac Jones had to deal with Matt Patricia and Joe Judge <laughs> as his offensive coordinators. Who Those are not offensive guys. That experiment did not work. Instead, Bill O'Brien back in action coaching football. He's their offensive coordinator returning to New England. So we'll see how it works out. They couldn't get DeAndre Hopkins. Instead, they're going to roll with, you know, hopefully Kendrick Bourne, you know, makes a name for himself again. I liked him a few years ago out in San Francisco. Devontae Parker, a former Miami Dolphin, and Juju Smith-Schuster coming to town. I mean, you hope the offense will be better. The defense from Bill Belichick's, you know, just ability alone should be pretty good. But New England, I think, definitely sticks out. Ben, you've been alluding to you like three teams in this division. I have a pretty good feeling this is the team you're not too high on. Well, look, and that's the thing, though, and this is why this is a stacked division, because even the team I'm not that high on, I still think they're a solid team. I still think that this is a team capable of winning seven games. You know, you look at a Bill Belichick team, they're always competitive. He always gets his teams ready to play. The defense is always good. Doesn't matter whether you have names out there or not. And, you know, they do have some names on the defensive side of the ball, you know, still at the same time, offensively, you don't love anything outside of maybe Ramondre Stevenson, but even that, how much, how many of his carries is he going to lose to Zeke, or is Zeke just going to be a goal line guy? You know, is Mac Jones able to show that he can play when he has a real offensive coordinator? It's just a lot of questions that you don't expect to have with New England, and honestly, I think that's enough for there to be enough growing pains for them to just not be able to compete for the division. What does New England have going for them? I I, I can't think of anything. Mac Jones, he's good, but people were ready to write him off last year. He's not a winner. At least he hasn't shown that. Your wide receiver one is Juju, who couldn't even put up incredible numbers with Mahomes at quarterback, and Mac Jones isn't Mahomes. Yet you're going to be running the Bill O'Brien two tight end sets. Remember how we did it with Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez? Well, now... Let me introduce you to Hunter Henry and Mike Gesicki. Those two sets are not equal in any form of talent. It's going to be tough. The offensive it's line. It's going to be a lot of bad gritties. Or a lot of really bad gritties. Gesicki, another guy. 
I don't think is very good. But that might just be because he's from Penn State. Uh, I was going to say the Penn State bias. Again, the vendettas. Uh, but also, everybody knows Gasicki's not that great. He had a lot of promise in Miami and never really put it together. He had one good year in 2020, and even then, he was barely a top-10 tight end, if that. So it's going to be tough. The defense under Belichick is always going to be good. Belichick owns his division, right? No matter how bad the Patriots are, Belichick knows how to win tough divisional games. So I don't think the Patriots get shut out in the division, but it's going to be tough for them to, to win a game or two against some of these other teams. They just don't have the talent to compete. This might be the year we see Belichick retire because he deserves that much. He just He's getting up there in age, and he deserves better than what he has right now. Yeah, I mean, England. he gives himself what he has. He does. <laughs> but if, uh, <laughs> he's like 70 years old at this point. Uh, he needs to know. Have Bill Parcells call him up and say, uh, Bill, it's time. Hang him up. Okay, Bill. <laughs> okay, Bill. And then, then, then Bill O'Brien can take his rightful spot as the Patriots head coach. Too many bills, not enough bills spent on the receiver position for Mac Jones, in my opinion. But the Jets, but they beat they, the Bills. Uh, they can. I mean, they beat the Bills throwing the ball what three times a couple years ago. That was a was it a torrential downpour? I don't. I think it was just that cold. I don't think it was. It was the cold and wind. Cold, cold and the wind. wind. That's what it yeah. was. Uh, the Jets, they backed up the Brinks truck for a bunch of free agents. Massive offensive overhaul after going 7-10 and 10 last year. Obviously, they're the off-season darlings. They're on hard knocks. Aaron Rodgers is there. He brought his whole entourage. Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb. McCall Hartman also joins. We had a surprise retirement. Corey Davis retired okay. at only the age of 28. Um but, I mean, I think it comes down to it. it looked like this Jets team was a quarterback away last year. And we've had situations like that the last few years. Some of them worked out. Tom Brady going to Tampa Bay. Matthew Stafford going to the Los Angeles Rams. Some of them didn't. Matt Ryan to Indianapolis. Russ, Russell cool. Wilson to Denver. So, which side of that coin is Rodgers going to fall on? And are the Jets this season, even the rest of the roster in totality, are they overhyped or are they overdue to make a run in this division? Look, I think it can be a little bit of both. There's a lot of hype surrounding this team. Now, you know, moves like bringing in Dalvin Cook don't make a ton of sense to me because I thought they already had two solid backs in Michael Carter and Brees Hall. But, you know, you add a third to the mix. You've seen three-headed monsters in the past. I like the wide receiver room with Garrett Wilson, Miko Hardman, Alan Lazard, you know, Randall Cobb, how effective he actually is. We'll see. Usually you see a young wide receiver step up. C.J. Uzama and Tyler Conklin are solid tight ends. But the defense is where it's at for this Jets team. Carl Lawson, Quinnen Williams, C.J. Mosley, Quincy Williams, Sauce Gardner. You know, Jordan Whitehead, DJ Reed, you know, Adrian Amos. This is a very, very strong group of defensive players led by one of the best defensive head coaches in the NFL right now, and Robert Sala. The defense was not the problem last year. The defense is insanely good. You know, yeah, they they lost May, but, you know, they, they've got some great players. The front seven is great. I am excited to see what the Jets can do. Do I think they necessarily win the division? It depends. I mean, is Rodgers still that guy? And I'm not too sure. I, I want him to be. I want to see it. But I'm really not 100% sold on him being able to go in there and have success. The weapons are there. That's not going to be a question. But does Aaron Rodgers still have it? Because let's be honest, he's a completely different person than who he was who won the MVP two years ago. The Jets defense, I don't think it's far-fetched to say, is by far the best defense in all of football. I don't think they have a single weakness on the defense. But def but games are one of the in the trenches, right? The Jets have the defensive side on lock. They might have one of the 
worst offensive lines in the league, though. They have a terrible offensive line, and you need that when you have a quarterback who's almost 40 years old. Rodgers doesn't move as well as he used to. Now, he's still elusive in the pocket, but he's not going to take off and run for a first down, you know, as many times as he had in the past. Even if you go back to his two back-to-back MVP years a few years ago, he's older still. You know, he's a lot more relaxed. He's not as uptight as he was in Green Bay. So that might buy him a little bit, but it's going to be tough. I don't love their receiver room. I'm sorry, Ben. Wilson is one of the best receivers in football. But McCole Hardman, again, as a number two in Kansas City, never really showed out. He was very boomer bust. Alan Lazard, even in Green Bay, was good, not great. Now, Corey Davis retiring, surprising. I thought Corey Davis was really talented. But that's $10 million now for the Jets to spend elsewhere. And I hear David Bakhtiari might be somebody uh, Rodgers wants to bring in to to the New York Packers. It's going to be tough for the Jets. You have to have a lot of faith in a lot of things going right. But why can't they go right? They went right in Tampa. They went right in uh, the with the Rams in L.A. They don't go wrong a lot recently because everything's put in place. You've seen how other teams have brought in older quarterbacks to your team and then won. Why not the Jets? The Jets are due for something good to happen. They haven't had a home playoff game in over 20 years. They might have it break, that streak broken this year, and that's pretty exciting to see for the city. Yeah, I'd be remiss. Ben, you mentioned you you thought the Jets had two really good running backs already, Brees Hall and Michael Carter, bringing in Dalvin Cook. I have to just mention, because we're going to talk about, you know, last uh, season we talked about outsider performances. We're going to do that for the preseason to kind of tease in the coming weeks. But is he a band of Kanda? I, I just have loved him, what he's done on the field already. So that that is a deep and a strong running back room. But Corey's right. The offensive line, definitely the standout weakness right now for this Jets team. So it's time. Let's break this down. AFC East, for me, I think this is going to be eerily similar to the NFC East last season, where we're going to have three teams make the playoffs, and that last team vying for that last wild card spot until the very end. I am going to have the Miami Dolphins winning this division. I'm going to stay with 13 wins. Buffalo just a step behind them like Dallas was with Philly in the NFC East. I'll put Buffalo probably about 12 wins. The Jets, I think, go from 7 and 10 to they flip that 10 and 7. So lock for the playoffs. But again, the offensive line, Rodgers, I think, will do enough. But I, I do worry about it. And then the Patriots... Probably about eight and nine again is where I'd have them because you look at the AFC South, probably only going to send one. We're going to talk about the AFC West in a couple weeks. Bottom half of that division, not great. So there's going to be playoff spots to be had in this conference. Yeah, look, I think that, you know, Miami is the team I like the most in this division. So that's who I'm going to ride with. I'm going to go with Miami in first. I think that Buffalo and New York vie for second. I think that Buffalo is going to edge them out, but the Jets are going to be close right behind them. Now, I, I agree with you, Ryan, that I think that this team, this division is capable of having three playoff or yeah, three playoff teams. But it's going to be really difficult because you figure there's at least two teams in the AFC West. You got the Chiefs and Chargers. There's at least two teams in the AFC North that is loaded. So I don't know. There could be there could very well be three playoff teams coming from the AFC North or the AFC East. Yeah, uh, I do want to point. Out, I think that the chances for the AFC North and the AFC East to send more teams to the playoffs, it's a better chance for them to do it than the AFC West to send two teams. I think the chances for the the North and the East are better than the Chargers have. But that's just just, just me. I think the Patriots are going to be picking top five for the first time in the Belichick era. I think they just have too much going against them. I want to give them like five wins, and I feel like that might be even generous. It's just they have a lot working against them. In third place, I'm going the Dolphins. I have like nine and eight-ish. I just think that the other teams in the division are just a little better than them, and losing Ramsey really hurts because he's a bona fide CB1, and you and losing that really hurts you. 
Second, I have the Jets at like 11 and six. I think Rodgers, who's prone the last couple of seasons to make a big mistake in a big moment. I think he has a couple of those. I think the defense just can't do it all. And the offensive line is going to give them some issues, but the Jets are going to be fine. They're going to be playing in the playoffs and they're going to be dangerous in the playoffs. And I'm still rocking with the regular season warrior bills, 12 and five. They're going to win some games against some good teams. I think DeMar Hamlin being back is going to give them a shot in the arm early. Just like I thought him going out last year, kind of, put a damper on their season. I think losing him kind of really sullen the locker room a bit where guys just were a little unsure and they just weren't playing as confident as they could have been. So I think getting him back, I think McDermott's a good coach. I think they kind of figure out their offensive identity better because last year was the first year without Dayball. And now you got, you know, Shea Tierney and all these guys on the offensive side of the locker room. I think they're able to figure out their identity and play a little better. My biggest takeaway there is: Do we all just make a mistake of all betting against Bill Belichick? That typically doesn't Absolutely. go over well. But yeah, we'll we'll find out in a couple months if we made the right choice or not. But that's going to do it for today's show. Thank you for joining us for another weekend edition of the Outsider Sports Football Podcast. We're going to be back shortly talking about the NFC West. So join us then. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time.